Welcome to the Ogre Project. Normally for these videos, I try to keep them short, keep each clip to about 30 seconds or so to fit into everyone's attention span, but in this case, we're gonna do something different. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you pretty much everything. So with this Reaper Ogre, I'm gonna show you the whole process. We're not gonna cut out, well, we're gonna cut out a few things, but you're gonna see about 90% of the painting process. And in this first part, we are just gonna be painting the basics of the skin. So to begin with, I started with an undercoat of green brown, and that is our uh, deepest shade layer. That goes over the entire miniature. And right now we are painting the second shade layer, which is a mix of green brown and green ochre. We are painting this through the process of layering, that is thin transparent layers of paint. You can see our paint is thinned on the palette and we load up the brush and when the brush goes off camera, I'm touching it to a paper towel to absorb excess moisture from the brush. And we know we have the proper amount of moisture on the brush when we do a brush stroke and it's a smooth, even line and there's not a drop of excess water at the end of the brush stroke. If, the, if that is there, it means we have to go back to the paper towel and give it another quick wipe. Since we're working on the secondary shade, and this is going over 90% of the miniature, we don't have the paint too thin uh, just yet. This is about one to three paint to water paint ratio. And uh, how much you thin your paint mainly depends on, it depends on several factors. It mainly depends on how fast you wanna paint. The thinner the paint, the longer it takes to paint, uh, but the less brush strokes that are gonna show up in the final results. And I'm taking my time on this miniature, so I have to paint a lot thinner or on the thinner side than what I would do if I wanted just to paint something in uh, one evening. So this layer gets you applied everywhere except for the deepest recesses where we still want the straight green brown to show. And this process takes uh, quite a while because we have a large miniature here and I'm applying it over 90% of the surface area of the skin and there's a lot of skin. So this section right here, uh, I sped up the video to uh, 150%. So it's a little faster than normal. And even there, it's this clip was about seven and a half minutes. I've cut it down to five minutes because even seven and a half sped up for me was too long. So this is the whole process. And notice as we're painting, we're not just painting over every area once. The whole process of layering is layer upon layer upon layer until we stop seeing uh, results from applying an additional layer. So we keep going around the miniature until we are highlighted up to the point where it matches the mix that we have on our palette.
Time for our second layer, and this is our base coat. Now, people have different terms for base coat. Uh, some people uh, call that uh, the base coat is whatever color you put down first, regardless of what it is. I refer to the base coat as whatever is the main color of the model. So the base coat is what is, is the base of the color you're painting, and the highlights and the shades work from the base coat. So just so we're all clear here. So for this color for the base coat, again, we are applying it over, uh, we're about 80% of the model now, maybe about 75%. We're leaving that first deepest, darkest uh, green brown shade in the deepest recesses. In the secondary recesses, we're leaving that mix. And so this is going over uh, any area where we uh, don't want the shade to be showing. We are starting to really work in overhead lighting, imagining if there's a light overhead the miniature and applying the base coat appropriately. Again, this is gonna take a while because we're still applying it over a good portion of the miniature. So this section, once again, was about seven and a half minutes, which I've sped up and shortened to five minutes. Finally, the paint is just a little bit thinner now because we're working on the base coat. So I have it at about, I'm gonna guess about one to four. Again, the uh, consistency of your paint depends on uh, how fast you wanna paint, also what colors you're using. I'm using a, a subtle transition here, not a big jump between colors, so I can have the paint a little bit thicker. If I was uh, jumping, doing an extreme color change, I would have the paint even thinner, perhaps one to five or more.
working on our first highlight and I've mixed in some basic skin tone now. Uh, initially I mixed in the beige red because I wanted a little bit of a, a human flesh tone to our ogre rather than just going with straight yellows and now I've mixed in some basic skin tone as well because if I mixed in more of the beige red um, it would start turning the highlights to red and notice that we're still using the same pool of paint here and there's still some of the green brown uh, that we initially used in the mix however we've added so much more of the other colors it's uh, almost been eliminated so technically this is a four color mix but the main colors that we're using is just three by now you should be getting an idea of what the layering process is once again thin transparent layers applied multiple times uh, in this case we're leaving the base uh, the uh, the base coat uh, wherever we want the natural skin color to be showing now we're working on the highlights so we're really concentrating on the uh, areas where we want the light to start reflecting off the skin uh, this section once again i've uh, trimmed about five minutes so i think it was six minutes uh, initially so we're speeding things up uh, after this point uh, things should start getting uh, quite a lot quicker
working on our secondary highlight now and we've eliminated all the green brown i actually have a new mix here we eliminated all the uh, beige red as well just using basic skin tone and green ochre and uh, this is where the process really starts speeding up because they're really concentrating on much smaller areas of the model uh, we do have the paint thinner here we're closer to about one to five which is i've been using for the past mixes as well uh, again you can use thicker paint which will speed up the painting process but you'll have more brush strokes that will show up and i am taking my time with this particular miniature so with this layer we're looking at applying it to roughly about 20 percent uh, surface area on the skin uh, really holding the miniature looking at it from straight above so we can determine exactly where we want the light to be hitting the skin and applying the highlights accordingly. For our final highlight, mixing in more of the basic skin tone, and you can see we're working on very small areas of the miniature now. This is basically an edging step. It's just that there's no real edges because we're doing uh, skin tone, so we have much more uh, curved areas and sharp edges, but the process is pretty much the same. Uh, really concentrating on those highlights so we can get a good sheen on the skin, and you can see the brush stroke is uh, much more controlled at this point, uh, which is putting on basically spots rather than broad brush strokes. And the painting process is much quicker. We've gone from uh, seven and a half minute clips and we're down to clips that uh, still sped up, but I have not shortened at all. So we're at about three minutes at this stage. And that's about it for the basics of layering and painting the skin. However, we are not done with the skin. We're going to be doing a lot more to it. However, I'm breaking this up into separate videos so we don't end up with one really long three hour video and you can pick and choose which parts you want to go over. Since this is not the end of the entire series, I don't have an ending for you. So I'm just going to let this play out and hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time for part two of the ogre project thanks for watching bye bye
I'm the god of hellfire! I got a hellfire!